Time now for our Eye on the Prize segment, and that means the prize, of course, is the midterm elections just four weeks from tomorrow. We're focused like a laser beam on it, and new polling and new reporting suggests that the Latino vote is going to loom large, which of course means the Democrats are going to benefit, right? I mean, Latino vote, Hispanic vote, that's the Democrats. Or is it? Joining us right now to break it down and analyze what might be a surprise growing conservative base in America is Cesar Ibarra. He is a vice president of policy at Freedom Works, and he joins us right here in studio. Cesar, good to see you, sir. Larry, great to be on. All right, so so what's really happening with the? You know what? Even before we get into the details of it, it's sort of a misnomer to say the Latino vote because this is a, a Latino from Argentina is not the same as a Latino from Mexico, not the same as a Latino from Dominican Republic, right? Well, let's get it straight first. If you are going to be voting, whether you're black, Asian, or Hispanic, you're an American, Thank and you. that's when that's what we have to focus on. We're all Americans, and you know, every every American cares about about the issues that are moving the needle in this election: education, crime, and safety, mm -hmm. the economy, right? And President Biden has totally done a terrible job on these three specific issues, which is why you're starting to see all of these demographics, especially the Latino vote, starting to trend to the right. So, thank you, President Biden, for uh, for yeah. doing a terrible job because you're making us, uh, you're making our policies not only resonate with Americans, but also making us look like the common sense party. Well, thank you, and you just sort of. Um, <laughs> You, you put a spotlight on what, frankly, is kind of an offensive notion that you hear from Democrats and the media all the time, that in some way because of your ethnicity or your national orig origin or the, your whatever your first language might be or your skin color, that affects how you're going to vote on serious policies like crime or the economy. I mean, it, it should transcend such things, right. shouldn't it? Right, and the Democrats did a great job for decades at gaslighting minority voters in that they had their best interests at heart, and I think that is starting to change. Look, I, I'm I'm originally from Mexico. I take pride from being from there. But, you know, here in America, I'm a voter, I'm a taxpayer, and that is how I view the issues. And remember, America is not about the people. America is about the ideals, freedom, individual liberty, the rule of law, right? So that's mm. what we have to focus on. That is what Republicans are honing in on, and we are resonating with all of these demographics. So I'm very excited about where we're going to be in the midterms. Well, I love hearing that, Cesar, and I, I do love it. I love the great work that, that everybody over Freedom Works does. The fact that you're aligned with them suggests, yes, freedom, liberty, let's let us just, you know, uh, yeah make the most out of the freedoms that this nation gives us. There is a concern, though, I think, from many people about first-generation immigrants coming from Latin America because they're coming from countries who have Marxist leanings, if not full-on Marxism, as their right. economic standard. And when they come to America, they sort of want to import some of those ideas with them. Well, and that's what the Democrats are doing, right? They they are promoting those policies. And what we are doing at FreedomWorks and all these great organizations across the country and on the ground, they are educating all of these voters or you know just folks in general who can vote that it is the Republican Party who has their best interests at heart. We want the, our free enterprise system is unique. That's why people come here in the first place, right? Because there is more opportunity. If look, if if, if the Latin America was was as great as some people think it is, people would be staying there. Hmm. But that is not the case. That's why we want to come to America because there's so much opportunity here, and the policies that the Democrats are pushing are the same policies that people fled from, right? Right. <laughs> so we have to focus on. We have to be positive about our messaging, right? And, and and draw that contrast, which which I said earlier, President Biden yeah. has made it so easy for us to do. Well, that brings us to policies that transcend um, economic opportunity and jobs and that kind of thing. Because I, I you know, you see Democrats pushing. Uh, uh, defund the police right. and and putting criminals out on the streets with no cash bail and things like that. Uh, I've got to think if you're fleeing Honduras or, or El Salvador or Guatemala and you're coming to America, the last thing you want is to see your neighborhoods now as crime ridden as the neighborhoods you just left. Right, exactly. Well, look at the Rio Grande Valley. It's been Democrat for decades. I'm, I'm, you know, quote me if I'm wrong, but I, th I think it's almost a, a century yeah, that, it's been, right. uh, that it's been a Democrat that stronghold. That stretch of districts right along Correct. the... Correct. And yeah. why is it now trending Republican? Because of the disaster that's happening at the border. I think all the folks there, it's a predominantly Hispanic region in America, they are all for immigration. It's a lot of folks who have immigrant roots, but they want safety in their communities. And what they're seeing with, with Biden's border crisis, it's exactly the opposite, right? So to your point, crime and safety is a big, big um, issue mm -hmm. that is moving the needle in this swing districts, which is where you, you see Myra Flores, Cassie Garcia, Monica De La Cruz yeah. actually having a shot at taking these uh, these Democrat politicians out of office. Yeah, and here in the D.C. area, there's two rising stars, one in Maryland, uh, Euripsi Morgan, yep. and in Virginia, uh, Yesley Vega, yes. who is uh, both legal immigrants to this country yeah. as well. 
well. Um, are they able to sort of break through in suburban areas? Suburb you know, this is a suburban, relatively wealthy neighborhood in sure. Yesley Vega's case, Prince William County, Virginia. Uh, that's not a border town, but the issues are just as strong there. Well, are they not? I think I think I think every every nowadays every every state is a border town, right? Yes. Because of the fentanyl. Except crime. Martha's Vineyard. Except that's, Martha's that's not allowed to be. <laughs> say that, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's where Barack Obama lives, so that's off site. Right. No, but but again, look at the fentanyl crisis. That is plaguing every single region in the country right and where's the root of all of that it is in our weak borders yep. right we are not stopping that flow which is what which is why yesley vegas is, is you know her her law enforcement background yep. her immigrant background all of that is resonating in these communities so you know i'm an optimist we're not we're optimists at freedom works and we think we have a shot right president biden the democrats are just their policies are terrible for america and we are i think we are very fired up about yesley vegas shot at taking yep. out abigail spamberger so are we we're focusing on multiple races house races across the country and yesley vegas definitely <laughs> one yeah. of them we're going to have her on the program as well and you have another gentleman by the name of Juan Siscomani mm. uh, down in, in southern Arizona who's also uh, I mean he's got a great story immigrant family his dad is a bus driver down in Tucson I mean just the epitome of the American dream and he has a shot at being a congressman and, and this guy is going to be a leader of the party moving forward see so Cesar this takes me back to again transcending economic policies and the other issues that most people do vote on if you just look if, if there's a way to look at the Hispanic voter the Hispanic community Latin community and people who, are, who have uh, immigrated here over the last several decades. Uh, on a whole, setting aside party affiliation, these are conservative people. Yeah. Family is incredibly important. Oh, Their yeah. faith is incredibly important. Their home should be with the conservative movement. Right, exactly. And the Democrats have a lot of animosity towards the idea of family and the yeah. idea of those conservative values that these people hold very tight. Oh, I can't imagine Democrats wanting a teacher to allow a child to transition their gender at, well, at 10 years old. Works very well in your typical well, Hispanic look, family. I'm from Mexico. You try to go and say, you know, you go and teach them about all the woke stuff that's happening here in America. Yeah. They're going to say, this is crazy. It's not only anti anti science, but it's also, <laughs> I mean, this woke stuff just doesn't play well with these voters and the Democrats, you know, from the Latinx to all of the gaslighting, that, that it's not resonating with Hispanic voters. Right. So again, we just have to continue making a mockery out of what the Democrats are doing and, and at the same time pushing our policies and why our policies of freedom, individual liberty, rule of law are what's going to make them more prosperous here in America. Well, and finally, because we talked about a lot of domestic issues, national security issues sure. and, and things that we could be doing with our neighbors. I know um, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo during the Trump administration really focused on Latin American outreach um, because our strong economy, our freedoms, and our secure border actually ends up helping Mexico, ends oh, yeah. up helping because because they do. There's no reason why Mexico shouldn't be a thriving economy with the right. natural resources they have there, but there is corruption. There has been a history oh, yeah. of corruption. So what should we be doing more proactively? Well, on a foreign policy look basis. at what President Trump did. He was able to have a good relationship with the socialist Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, the president yeah. down in Mexico. We, our, our border was safe. You know, the, the the drugs pouring through were not at the same amount that we're seeing now. But so you know, we need we need to have a stronger posture against the cartels. Mexico right now is a de facto narco state, and they are the ones responsible for all the fentanyl and all the drugs and criminal criminality happening down at our borders. And we need to have a zero tolerance policy against these thugs and transnational criminal organization organizations yep. because they are a threat to national security and we need to start treating them like we treated foreign terrorists in the past. And meanwhile, we have the opposite right That's now. That's exactly right. With the wide open border. Uh, Cesar Ibarra, great stuff over Larry. at FreedomWorks. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you, Larry. We'll have you back again for sure, especially when we analyze these big victories coming up in a month, hopefully. Uh, That's Cesar Ibarra from FreedomWorks because guess what? Freedom works. More to come tonight on O'Connor Tonight. <laughs>